Alexandra Jones. I'm the editor of The Ophthalmologist, and I have a pleasure of speaking with Dr. David Lund, glaucoma specialist. First of all, could you tell me a little bit about yourself and your practice? Yes, yeah, certainly. So, uh, first of all, thanks you know, for the opportunity. Um, my name is David Lund, and I'm a consultant ophthalmologist specializing in complex glaucoma and cataract surgery. I'm the nominal lead of a UK hospital trust called South Seas Hospitals, uh, NHS Foundation Trust, which is a tertiary referral center covering a large area in Northeast England. Um, and I've built lots of our pathways from the ground up, including um, a review pathway and a new patient asynchronous virtual service for diagnosing and monitoring glaucoma. Uh, my complex expertise includes traditional incisional glaucoma surgery, um, such as trabeculectomy and aqueous shunt surgery, as well as a variety of laser and minimally invasive glaucoma surgery techniques. At the World Glau Glaucoma Congress, you presented a paper on the accuracy of various tonometry devices. Could you tell me a little bit about this paper? Sure, yeah. So we conducted a prospective study looking at patients attending a single clinician's clinic over a two-week period. Uh, this included patients newly referred into the clinic, uh, so some of whom had no ocular abnormality, and review patients with a variety of different glaucoma subtypes. Uh, so following visual acuity check, uh, patients then had four different tonometry checks, which were carried out in a variety of different orders and using standard masking techniques. The tonometers included all available in this particular department at the time, which were Tonopen, eye care, um, ocular response analyzer and the IOPG and IOPCC readings were collected and Goldman applanation tonometry. Hysteresis data were also gathered using the aura and ultrasound pachymetry was carried out using the PACMATE. And could you tell me about the key findings of the study? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's several ways that you can analyze data in a study such as this. Um, so one of the things we looked at was the correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient is a statistical measurement of the strength of relationship between the relative movements of two variables. So a score of one is complete correlation and a score of zero is, is no relation, uh, sorry, no correlation whatsoever. So our study found that the IOPG aura readings had a correlation coefficient of 0 0.951 uh, when compared against the, the GAT or Goldman Appalachian Summit readings. Uh, this was superior to all other modalities. Now, personally, you know, perhaps a more clinically useful metric is the percentage of patients measuring within two millimeters of the Goldman readings. So this was the metric that, um, that NICE or the UK government's National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence used when performing their meta-analysis when they were assessing the accuracy of eye care in their MedTech Innovation Report. Incidentally, in that report, they found um, that eye care was within two millimeters of mercury of GAT approximately 50% of the time. In our study, we found that for the oral results, were again superior. So the IOPG was 85%, the IPCC was 74%, the IK was just 30% in this particular study, and the Tonopen was 61%. So for the purpose of the study, we did extend it further. I didn't actually report this at the World Glaucoma Congress, but we extended it to three millimeters of mercury. And the values then uh, increased in all categories, obviously, but increased to 98% for the IOPG, 90% for the IOPCC, 63% for the IK, and 72% for the Tonopen. That's great to hear. And could you tell me how these findings are relevant to clinicians? Yeah, so, I mean, I was initially interested to trial the aura. As I knew in, in my practice, there's a significant volume of treated lower risk glaucoma or suspect patients who, due to time and capacity pressures common in lots of units, uh, they, that particular patient cohort were ideally suited to a virtual clinic model whereby the pathway is just a lot more efficient for the, for the patient and the clinician. And it means that my face-to-face -face clinician time can be focused mainly on the, the acute or complex cases. Uh, so the findings are really interesting because one of the concerns with creating a virtual pathway is obviously patient safety. Um, eye pressure accuracy is really the most important parameter in this, in, in this instance. Um, as clinicians, we're already used to a clinical setting whereby visual acuity 
um, perimetry or visual field and imaging is carried out by other allied healthcare pr practitioners or technicians but eye pressure has traditionally been performed by the clinician making the management decisions so before i set up the virtual service in my unit i need to be sure there was little to no possibility of any iop or intraocular pressure under estimation this is particularly risky as this could lead to an underestimation of the required iop control and potentially permittance of a faster rate of disease progression in the virtual model as the gap between visits in this pathway can be anything up to a clinic visit once every 24 months the consequences obviously could be potentially visually devastating the study findings i think achieve this but in, in all honesty, I was surprised to see such closely responding readings when compared to my GAT readings. And how would you respond to concerns about tonometer accuracy? So it, if you're alluding to tonometer accuracy uh, um, in terms of comparison with traditional air puff tonometry, for example, you know, the technology within the ocular response analyzer is just completely different to historical air puff tonometers. It's a question I, I commonly get asked by non-glaucoma ophthalmologist colleagues, you know, within my department or, or trainees. Um, as clinicians, you know, in order to practice evidence-based medicine, something we should all strive for and be continually striving for, we have to be open to change. You know, modern cataract surgery, um, offering selective laser trabeculoplasty and um, early in the treatment pathway for glaucoma patients and increasingly minimally invasive techniques for surgically managing the glaucoma patient are all clear current examples of this. Um, there's a healthy body of evidence now behind Aura versus GAT, um, Aura compared with GAT and the overall accuracy, and an increasing evidence to actually suggest that, if anything, it could be more accurate than Goldman Appalachian Tonometry. It's also, I think, um, important to, to realise what we're comparing the uh, tonometry with or what, what we're comparing it against. It's clear that it's superior modality to historic above tonometry which is profoundly affected by different corneal properties of different patients. We're really comparing it against time taken for the clinician to perform Goldman Appalachian Tonometry. We're comparing it against the allied healthcare professional lining up the eye care or tonopen perfectly for the most accurate readings. Um, so it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a really exciting bit of kit and, and something that we use, that I use now universally in, in all of my virtual patients. Outside of the study, what are your personal experiences with tonometry and your recommendations for your glaucoma uh, specialist colleagues? So, of, of course, we've got to be careful in basing any recommendations on um, relatively small scale, non randomized studies. However, um, the evidence is mounting for modern air puff tonometers, such as the Aura, to be superior to other commonly used methods and possibly even Coleman tonometry. There are also other advantages of this modality of tonometry. It's relatively user independent um, with a relatively flat and short learning curve. Uh, there are cost savings, um, no topical anesthesia is required for the patient. There are no continuing costs of consumables. Um, also, there's no contact with the patient. So there's improved patient tolerability of this. And uh, th there's also some evidence to suggest that toleration is improved even compared with some of the older air puff tonometers. And, you know, at times, uh, in current times when infection uh, is key, there's also a theoretical reduced risk of infection with this. Um, with the prevalence of glaucoma estimated to increase significantly over the coming years as it's a disease of age and aging populations, uh, this method of accurate IOP measurement will be invaluable really to enable eye departments to see more and more patients safely and effectively, and in particular in a virtual glaucoma clinic setting. Dr. Lund, thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.